This lesson is for FST lesson 37 on composition of functions. One of the biggest issues that I've found that students end up having with this lesson is they forget to follow the order of operations. So just a quick reminder when you're simplifying anything make sure that you do follow that. Typically what you want to look for are any powers. You want to deal with those first before you do any multiplication. We'll see an example of this in one of our examples down below. For the composition of functions uh, you'll see a new symbol. It's an open dot or an open circle kind of like the multiplication symbol with a hole in the middle and when you read that out loud you say follows. So the way that this would be read here is g follows f of x. I think it should actually say g of x follows f of x. So if you're following someone remember that you're number two in line. So f of x is the first function and g of x is the second because he's following the first. So g follows f here. Uh, here it's listed out in words, here it's listed with the symbol itself. You could also do the same symbol of putting the f function first and the g second with the symbol here or you could do it also with parentheses. See how the f of x is on the interior of the parentheses indicating that that is the first function, g is on the outside so that is the second function. So what you'll do in either case is you'll plug f into g. The only exception to that would be if there's a number in place of x and that's like what we're going to see in our first example. So they give you two functions f of x and g of x and they say find f of g of 9. So this is typically what will be given to you at the beginning of a problem. They'll give you two functions to work with and they'll tell you to do something with it. In this case we're going to plug 9 in place of x into the g function and then the answer that we get we're going to plug that in for x into f. So it's going to look like this. We have f of something and that something is going to be us plugging 9 into g. If we plug 9 into g we're going to get 9 minus 7 because the g function is something minus 7. The something we're using in this case is the number 9. 9 minus 7 is 2 so now we're going to calculate f of 2. So I'm going to write the f function but instead of putting an x in, I'm going to leave an empty space. So the f function looks like that. And wherever I see an empty space, that was where my variable was supposed to go. Now I'm going to plug in the number that I want to plug in, which is the number 2. So this is where you want to be real careful about the order of operations. Some kids here want to do 2 times 2 and get 4, and 4 squared would be 16 but that is incorrect. You want to do 2 squared which is 4, 4 times 2 which is 8. So we're going to get 8 here and then 3 times 2 is 6 so our answer then is 14. So that's one type of problem that you're going to see. That is where you have to plug a number into the functions. Your answer will be a number. The other type of problem that you're going to see is one like the next one. This one they give you two functions again and they say g follows f of x. They want you to find that composition. So what I've written next to the problem is what you're going to do. It says plug f into g. You always plug the first into the second. So we're going to plug f into g wherever I see a variable in g I'm going to replace it with the function f of x. So what you want to do is focus on the second function. Focus on g and what it looks like. g looks like a variable minus 7. So instead of the variable we're going to leave an empty set of parentheses. You could also use an empty blank. And in that empty space we're going to plug all of f. So you take your variable, leave a space for where it used to be, and you're going to plug in the other function. So in that empty place I'm going to put 2x squared plus 3x. Now the parentheses were something that I added in. I don't really need them in terms of simplifying the problem. So I'm going to look for any like terms that need to be added and then I'm going to drop the parentheses now because they were just there to help me visually figure out where I was going to substitute. So I don't really need them anymore. So I've got 2x squared plus 3x 
minus 7, and that is my new function after I've plugged f into g. There's nothing further to do here, there's no like terms to add, and I don't know the value of x, so I can simply quit. That's my answer. We're going to do one more example. We're going to use the same functions, but we're going to go in the opposite order now. So this time they want us to find f following g of x, so now we're going to plug g into f. And so let's see what happens when we do that. Again, focus on the second function and how big it is and its structure. So the structure of the function is 2 times something squared plus 3 times something. In that something, I'm going to put the g function. So g gets substituted in there and there. So if you look on the previous one, we only had one variable to substitute in, and we substituted it in with all of that. On this one, we've got two variables, so there's two places where we're going to substitute the g function, and that's okay. It's because that's the way the problem is set up. Sometimes you'll plug it in more than once, sometimes you won't. So I'm going to plug in x minus 7 in the two spaces where my variable used to be. Now I want to point out a couple things here about the order of operations and just some error spots for kids. When you have 2 times x minus 7 squared, you do not want to simply distribute the 2 here because the power is going to come first. So let's write what it isn't. It isn't going to be 2x minus 14 squared. So that's not it. It's also not going to be, you do not distribute the 2 either. The power here, you don't distribute that either. So it's not going to be x squared minus 7 squared. Okay, those are not the answers. What you want to do is what we call FOIL. FOIL is an acronym to help students remember how to multiply two binomials together. So I've got 2 there, and I'm going to worry about that later. And I'm going to write out my x minus 7 twice, because that's what x minus 7 squared means. So I've gotten rid of the square now, and I've written it out twice. Now I'm going to do FOIL on these two pieces here. The 2 is just going to hang out. And FOIL I can do pretty quickly in my head. I know it's going to be x squared minus 7x minus another 7x plus 49. The two negative 7x's in the middle are going to make negative 14x in the center. If you need help with FOIL, feel free to ask during class. I can help you individually. And then I'm going to do the distributive property here to get rid of the parentheses. So I'm going to get 3x minus 21. I still have some parentheses back here that I need to deal with. I'm going to go ahead and distribute that 2. So when I do that, I get 2x squared, negative 28x, and 98. And then the 3x and the negative 21 are just hanging out. I do have some like terms here. There's no other 2x squareds or any other x to the second power, so that just gets rewritten. The negative 28x and the 3x get combined to make negative 25x. The 98 and the negative 21 combine to make 77. If you look at the answer that we got compared to the previous, when we went in a different order between g and f, we did get a different answer. So we need to just remind students that the composition of functions is not commutative. There may be situations where you do composition in either order and you do get it to be equal, but as a general rule, we would say when you do compositions, it is not commutative. If you do it in a different order, you will most likely get a different answer.